In this project, we will be making a felted bag. Your bag will look like this before and after it's been shrunk or felted. We will knit this bag with two strands of the same yarn. Create your cast on loop with approximately three feet of yarn. Place your needle through the loop and pull it snug. Position your yarn on your hand. Remember to keep the strand attached to the ball against your forefinger and the loose strand against your thumb. Begin casting on. Remember, in, grab the yarn, pull forward through the hole and snug the stitch up to the needle. Again, in, grab the yarn, pull forward through the hole and snug the stitch up to the needle. And again, in, grab the yarn, pull forward through the hole and snug the stitch up to the needle. We need to cast on 52 stitches for this project. Count your stitches to ensure you have the correct number. We still need to cast on four more. The first row begins with a purl stitch. Remember, the yarn must be in front of the needle to purl. Put the needle into the front of the stitch from the top, pull the yarn down between the needles, push the needle away through the original stitch, and slip it off. Following the pattern, we now knit 16 stitches. Remember, to knit, your yarn starts behind the needles. Again, in, loop the yarn at the back, through the hole, and off. Find a comfortable rhythm and don't let your stitches bunch up. Count your stitches to ensure that you have the correct number. Moving the yarn to the front, we are going to purl one stitch. Next, we are going to knit eight stitches. Remember, your yarn must be in the back for this. Complete the eight knit stitches, then count them to ensure you have the correct number. Continuing to follow the pattern, move the yarn to the front again and purl one stitch. Again, following the pattern, knit 16 stitches. Purl one. Complete the row by knitting eight stitches. Mm -hmm. 
Count the stitches to ensure you are following the pattern properly. Position your needle to begin row 2. This will be the opposite stitches to row 1. Following the pattern, begin by purling 8 stitches. Remember to start with the yarn in front. and six, and seven, and eight. Knit one, Purl 16. Knit one, purl eight, Knit one, purl sixteen. Find a good rhythm, and this will help to keep the tension even. and the last one is a knit stitch. Take a look at these first two rows and you will already see the pattern. Repeat this for row 3 and row 4. Position your work to begin row 5, which will be the buttonhole row. Following the pattern, purl the first stitch. 
Continuing to follow the pattern, knit 4 stitches and it will be time for the next buttonhole. Bring the yarn over by looping the yarn as you would for a stitch, then knit two together. This forms another buttonhole. Still following the pattern, knit the next four stitches. Create another buttonhole by bringing the yarn over, then knit two together. Continue in pattern until you have created eight buttonholes. Last one. Bring the yarn over, then knit two together. Knit the remaining three stitches. Spread the stitches along the needle to see the buttonholes. The next row will be a repeat of row two. Continue in pattern, repeating rows one and two until it measures ten and a half inches, ending with a row one. The eight buttonholes will be clearly visible, as will the corner seams created by the pattern. We will turn it over and begin shaping the bottom of the bag. Working on the wrong side and following the pattern, knit the entire row. This will be the foundation row for the bottom of the bag. You will only knit this row once. Begin the row with knit 24. Remember to count to ensure accuracy. We knit two stitches too many, so we must undo them. Slip the next stitch from one needle to the other without knitting it. Knit the next two together. Now we are going to pass the slipped stitch over the knit stitch.
This is a double decrease and will help to shape the bottom of the bag. Continuing to follow the pattern, knit 16 more stitches. Count your stitches to ensure accuracy. We only have 15 stitches. Knit until you have 16 stitches. Once again, following the pattern, we are going to slip the next stitch, then knit two together, then pass the slip stitch over. Here is our decreased stitch. You will see there are six stitches remaining on the other needle. Leaving those stitches unknit, we are going to turn the bag around to work from the other side. We can see the corner seam. This is where the pattern repeat for row one begins. We are going to slip one stitch purlwise. That means we will slip a purl stitch, not a knit stitch. Following the pattern, purl 15 stitches. Remember to count for accuracy. When you have purled 15 stitches, purl two together. Here is our decreased stitch, which shapes the bottom. Ignoring the remaining stitches, turn the work again. This is the beginning of row two. Slip one stitch knitwise. That means that we slip a knit stitch. Now knit the next 16 stitches. and slip one knitwise. 
knit 1, and pass the slip stitch over. There is our decreased stitch which shapes the bottom. It is time to turn our work again. Now we repeat rows 1 and 2 until there are no stitches remaining on the right needle. The last row will be a row 1 of the pattern. Row 1 begins with slip 1 stitch purlwise. Purl 15 stitches. And count your stitches to ensure accuracy. Purl 15 stitches. Purl the next two stitches together. Again, we are at the corner seam for the bottom of the bag. We have finished all our decreases, so now we fold our work in half with the right sides together. On this needle we have 17 stitches, and on this needle we have 18 stitches. This odd numbered stitch will be the stitch that we start with. Make sure that you have your right sides together. To cast off and create a seam, we will need a third needle. Using the third needle, slip the odd numbered stitch off and onto the new needle. Line up the stitches and position your yarn to begin knitting. Using the third needle, knit into the first stitch on the first needle, then into the first stitch on the other needle. Grab your yarn from the back and bring it forward through the first stitch, then forward again through the other stitch. Now pass the slip stitch over the cast off stitches. Repeat. Knit into the first stitch on each needle. Grab your yarn from the back and bring it forward through both stitches and slide them off onto the third needle. Now pass the previous stitch over the newly cast off stitch. And again, knit into the first stitch on each needle. Grab your yarn from the back and bring it forward through both stitches and off. Pass the previous stitch over the newly cast off stitch. You should always have the same number of stitches on both needles. Remember, knit into the first stitch on each needle, knit the stitches, and slide them off. Pass the previous stitch over the newly cast off stitch. One more time, knit the first stitch off each needle, and pass the previous stitch over. Repeat for the last remaining stitches. Pass the previous stitch over the very last stitch so you only have one remaining on one needle.
Measure approximately two feet of yarn to sew the side seam with and cut it. Here we have our nice seam created by our three needle cast off. Turn the bag right side out and you'll see the box shaped bottom of your bag. Thread the darning needle with the trimmed yarn that is attached to the bag. Identify the last stitch in the one side seam and the last stitch of the other seam. Thread the darning needle through this stitch then through the other stitch, pulling it snug to form the corner. Next, thread the darning needle through one stitch on one side of the open seam, then through one stitch on the other side of the open seam. Again, through one stitch on one side, and one stitch on the other. Back and forth, one stitch on each side. Again, evenly matching the stitches on both sides. Remember to pull the stitches snug, but not tight. Your seam should be invisible. Check your work as you go so that the sides are even when you reach the top. Before you finish the seam, stretch it out to ensure it's not too tight. Expose the inside seam. Weave the last bit of yarn into the new seam and trim the excess off. We need to make our eye cord for the strap, and we will do this by using double pointed needles. We need to make four stitches, so begin with about one foot of double stranded yarn. Create your cast on loop. Place one needle through the cast on loop and pull snugly up to the needle. Cast on three stitches for a total of four.
Position your yarn on one hand as you normally would. Normally we would actually turn our work to begin knitting, but this time we won't. We will leave the needle in place and slide the stitches to the other end. Your yarn will be coming from the other end. Knit as you normally would, drawing the yarn across the back for the first stitch. This will create a circular knitted cord. Again, don't turn the needle. Simply slide your stitches to the other end. Remember, knit the first stitch, drawing the yarn across the back for a circular effect. Knit all the stitches on the eye cord. Continue this way until the eye cord measures 48 inches. Complete a few more rows if necessary. When you have reached 48 inches, it is time to cast off. Cut the yarn at approximately one foot. Thread the yarn through the darning needle. Bringing the yarn across the back of the work, just like when we were knitting, thread the needle all the way through the front of the four stitches. Remove the knitting needle and pull the yarn snug. Weave the tail end of the yarn through several times. You will need to weave in the loose threads on one end only. This is what our eye cord will look like when it is finished. The other loose threads will be used for sewing the ends of the eye cord together later. Take one end of the eye cord and place it in through a hole from outside to inside. Continuing with that end, weave it out the next hole and in the next hole. Turning the bag, weave the cord out the next hole. Pull some of the length through and weave it in the next hole, out the next hole, in again, and out through the last hole. Pull the eye cord all the way so that we can join the ends together. To do this, we will thread our darning needle with the yarn from either end of the eye cord. Weave the darning needle through the other end of the eye cord, then back through the original end.
Continue weaving back and forth into the ends until it is one long piece and the seam is snug. Weave the last little bit of yarn into the eye cord. The upper edges should be nice and even. The bottom of the bag should resemble a box. The eye cord should be woven through the buttonholes to create two straps. The bag on the left is the felted version of the bag on the right. And now your project is complete.